of also you can connect with people and you can also ask questions about, for example, how to apply to grad school, how to do research, how to write papers, anything that you want in your career, you can have a, a group mentoring session. And we have a lot of top researchers like Yabi Juan, uh, Juan Carlos Niebles, uh, Andy Brock and so on, um, that we will have around one hour to discuss with them. So if you're interested in receiving mentoring or you have questions about anything about related to research in computer vision or in machine learning, you can definitely uh, should attend this uh, mentoring hour. And now we start with, uh, with the current workshop. It's called LSCV Workshop at ICCV. So this is uh, a new uh, adventure or venture because the, um, the first uh, LSCV workshop was held at uh, CVPR at, in June of this year. And now this is our second workshop in computer vision at the International Conference on Computer Vision 2021. So first we start with the keynote speakers that we have. We have four uh, speakers, which is uh, equally divided between um, male and female um, speakers. So first we have Rene Vidal from uh, John Hopkins University, if I remember correctly. Uh, then Octavia comes from, the, um, from North Northeastern University. And then we skip to the panelists because we're going to have later today um, a round table with people working, mostly working from Latin America and we, we want to see what is missing to, let's say, to advance the research in computer vision in Latin America. How can we help? And um, how can we overall, let's say, create startups and other kind of uh, development activities in Latin America? So this will be uh, moderated by Gilberto, which is also uh, our, my co-chair in, in, in general co-chair. And we have panelists, we have Raul uh, Monroy Borja, uh, Enzo Ferrante, uh, Nina Girata, Pablo Muse, uh, Marley Velasco, Marie Jose Escobar, uh, Laura Alexandra Daza Barraga, Cesar Beltran, Estefania Talavera, and Sandra Avila. Oh, yeah, and we have uh, Victor Fragoso and Ivan Sigran. So I think this will be a very interesting uh, event. So we can actually get a discussion on how to improve, let's say, access to computer vision resources and computer vision research in Latin America. Also, Victor and Ivan will also be featured speakers or keynote speakers. Um, and I hope that we also enjoyed their, their talks. We also want to have two tutorials, which is also something new to, to, to our series of workshops. So I will be also giving a tutorial about writing papers on traverse perspective. And Karina Perez will be giving a tutorial about optical character recognition from fundamental to real life applications. So I think these two tutorials will run in parallel. So for this, we're going to use um, Zoom breakout rooms so you can attend either of the workshops that you want. And both workshops will be recorded, of course, to, to keep them for, for posterity. So if you cannot attend, you can also watch them in, in YouTube later when we upload them. So now we, we shared the, the general team that we, we was organizing this workshop. So we had Gilberto and me as organizational logistics uh, coaches. For sponsoring, we have Fabian Cava and Ulysses Moya. For tutorial chairs, we have Tania Anglai and Lourdes Martinez. For the program chairs slash um, presentation chairs, we have uh, Carlos Hinojosa, Victor Scorcia, and uh, Christian Rodriguez Opaso. For the doctoral consortium, we have um, uh, Mario Gonzalez, uh, Fernando Guario, and Hiram Ponce. For the mentorship and the um, program chairs, we have Paola Cascante and Lourdes Ramirez Serna. Um, for public relations and website, we have Josimar Chire, uh, Juan Sanchez Velaz, uh, Carlos Mata, uh, Christian Mata and Luis Santiago. And finally, for volunteers, we have uh, Rodolfo Valente and Eric Tokuda. So now we are clo close to the end of, the, of this um, opening remarks. So we thank our sponsors. So we have Google Research as a Latino sponsor. So thank you, Google. We also have um, Facebook as a gold sponsor. So thank you, Facebook. Uh, Microsoft as a gold sponsor as well. Uh, Amazon Science as a gold sponsor and uh, Salesforce, Apple, and NVIDIA as a bronze sponsor. So uh, the sponsoring in this workshop and in all workshops is, is the one that funds all the operations of the workshops and including the, the registration grants and all the costs for the workshops. So we're pretty grateful for, for sponsors about this. So now I share you the, um, the program for this uh, workshop. So we start, we already are into opening remarks here. So after this, we will have a, a first social hour. We will be held in Zoom. So anyone want to be social, meet people, connect to people, we can connect through Zoom. Then we are going to have the first block of invited talks at 9 a.m. in CST time zone. Then we have a break. Then we have the tutorials for one and a half hours. 
the tutorials will be presentations and questions. Then after the tutorials, we have the round table for one hour. Then we will have the mentoring hour and the doctor consortium in parallel. And then we can have a lunch break for one hour. And during the lunch, you can attend the sponsor boats uh, in Gather Down. And then uh, we will have the first keynote, uh, Octave Camps. Then we have some embedded talks, then a break. Then the very important poster session where we present all the posters. We have 12 posters that we're going to be presented in this, in this workshop. And you can use it to connect to people and to, to ask questions to the presenters. Then we have the second keynote by Rene Vidal. Then we have the closing remarks, including some uh, awards that we're going to give. And also we have finally this social hours too, which will happen in Gather Town. And this will also be a networking session. So this will be, a, of course, at the end of the workshop and any kind of networking questions that you may have, you can ask them here. So here, here we also have a QR code on how to attend ICCB. You have the registration grant and you can follow, of course, your uh, our guidelines for this. So uh, anything for the future, here you have our links or Twitter or Facebook or LinkedIn account or, or general email, and you can definitely join us. So I really like this picture because I took this picture in the last um, New Year's workshop we had in 2019 in person. So I hope that now that the pandemic is slowly going down, we can finally meet maybe during next year in person. So we can actually see everyone uh, again and we can enjoy our, uh, our workshop. So please enjoy the workshop and then let's continue with the social hour here in Zoom. Thank you, Matthias, for your presentation. So the, the idea of, the, of this social hour is we, we wanted to do something very, very open. Okay, so everyone is open. Uh, the, the MIG is open for participation. Now, I, I just want to say a few, a few more things about the, the organization of the, of the workshops and the kind of things that we are organizing, like uh, something that we that we wanted to make different this this time around was uh, usually workshops and conferences. We always have these keynote speakers, right? So they come to the conference, a better respected professor or better respected person in, in, in industry or academia. And usually you don't get to see the personal side, right? You, you see, you get to see the technical aspects, uh, maybe kind of his career sometimes when when they show the, the kind of research they do. But uh, uh, in tandem with, uh, with these keynote speaks, uh, spe speakers, we wanted as well to, to uh, showcase uh, the work of some people in that, because uh, one of the ideas of, of the, uh, this work of Latin Cine and artificial intelligence and Latin in computer vision is to, to build community, right? To, to understand better who are doing uh, research in computer vision in Latin America and, or, and other, other, other countries, because there are people like Matias who is really involved in this effort and he's in Germany for some, for some time now. So we are building community, but we also want to know better who are actually working on computer vision or artificial intelligence in, in Latin America as well. So we wanted to showcase the work and we actually went through a nomination process in which uh, a lot of people nominated people, uh, nominated the speakers, or sometimes they self-nominated, and then we went to, to a to a nomination pro, uh, to a selection selecting selection process to get some of the speakers. So this this is something that we wanted. Uh, also, well, because we have some interesting projects that will be uh, probably uh, uh, telling you about in the future. Uh, we also want to know better the. The, Latin, the community in Latin America. And, uh, and we know that there are some, some similar efforts like EPOR, the Latin Summit, and each country has different um, activity uh, conferences or com communities. But uh, in Latin America, sometimes we feel kind of disconnected, right? Uh, uh, each country is doing their own thing. And I think something like that Latin Summit has been trying to do is to give opportunity to Latin individuals to participate in these big conferences. But uh, uh, it's important right now because of the virtuality is probably not as interesting, but something that is, is cool, I think, is that it's not the same thing when you attend CVPR, ICCB, Neurips as an individual, like, ah, I go there, I don't, I don't know anyone, uh, right? Uh, you can you feel in, maybe intimidated when you get a paper accepted. Nowadays we have this workshop, so maybe the first day you will already meet some people. They they can give you some information on how to 
how to interact with people. Maybe they, they can introduce you. So some people here work with, with people in Stanford, with people in, uh, in Florida and different universities in the US or in maybe Europe. So already you can have some contacts when you go to conference. Uh, so this is kind of uh, giving you a completely different experience, right? I, I don't know, maybe uh, if you uh, if you're there, Victor, maybe you can share, because this, this is very open, right? maybe you can share your first experience as a student going to a big conference. Uh, how, how, how was it? And Victor is there. Yeah. Hey guys, how are you? Good to, good to see you all. Uh, I'm really excited to have the opportunity to talk to, I mean, all the community. So yeah, like uh, my first experience uh, while going to conference, back then it was, <laughs> uh, it was physical. So my first experience was like in, in 2013. So it was, I don't know if you guys have seen the, the meme about like a big dog uh, bringing like the little dogs uh, around to the river and so on, taking care of it. So hopefully for me, like it was next to Juan Carlos Nieves. So we attended uh, C uh, ICTV 2013 in Sydney and it was really helpful. I mean, at some point he was planning to send me along and I was like, wow, <laughs> I will have to do all the networking, which uh, for a student like in Latin America, like when you speak broken English is tough. So I think that, I mean, having him with me that uh, at that time, it was really useful. Uh, there were experiences like, for example, interacting with people in which it was difficult to communicate, but I mean, like you just sometimes you just have to do it. I mean, push yourself to the discomfort. So that's how it went my uh, experience and hopefully like actually like from that conference, I managed to connect to the next step in my career, which was cows moving from Colombia to doing my PhD in Saudi Arabia. Thank you, Victor. Anybody else have, have, wants to share their experience? Maybe you, Nina, uh, you're one of the panelists. Hello, uh, let me move my screen here. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Nina. I'm from uh, Brazil, University of Sao Paulo. Uh, I'm, I'm not so young, <laughs> so I started my uh, career as professor in 2001. So my experience um, participating in the events Yes, you, you're sure about uh, this uh, aspect of you going to the place and knowing nobody, it's, yes, it's not easy. So when I met some Brazilians, it was very nice because we could talk and so on. But uh, I would like to talk about uh, my experience actually in 2014. Uh, because I have been not, uh, I have not been going to conference because uh, I had uh, children, so <laughs> I was taking care of my children. I could not go uh, abroad. So uh, after like eight years, I went to uh, ICT in 2014, and uh, I saw many works. Uh, happening uh, with uh, machine learning and the images, uh, something that uh, I was not seeing in my department. So that uh, was very uh, important for me actually to perceive that uh, the world was doing so many things and we were not uh, there. So. Uh, I think it's very nice this effort uh, you are doing, the group, the let, Latin X, because uh, you know in, in Latin America we we are kind of uh, uh, 
we are not in the center of the research. So sometimes if you don't get the contact and see what everybody is doing, we get behind. So in the sense, uh, th this is one point I, that I'm. I would like to stress that it, I think this kind of event is very important to bring awareness to everybody that is doing research in this field, that there are many, many things happening around the world. And this kind of opportunity is very nice to, to just get in touch with uh, the most uh, relevant research in the world. So that's the, I don't know if I'm talking some nonsense here, but. No, no, <laughs> it's perfect, really yes, perfect, yeah, thank you. Yeah, because yeah. this is a kind of, I think this is a kind of thing that Latin AI is, uh, is after, creating these opportunities, right? Because, oh yeah, I, I, I see it as well here in Mexico, we are very close to the US. Uh, we have a very strong, uh, uh, I mean, a very strong uh, science, uh, let's say, um, community and a very strong science foundation because uh, we have the National Council for Science and Technology that gives us scholarships for people to go abroad. But the thing is that uh, the community itself in Mexico, sometimes they, they, and this is something that we want to discuss in the panel, uh, at least in Mexico, uh, the National Council, the, 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 the schools, the National Council, Council for Science and Technology favors a lot uh, publishing on journals. As a, as a way of promoting your career or so on, or, or even to graduate as an student, as a PhD. And, and uh, something that we notice is that people don't go to conferences that much because it doesn't count, you know? And this I is a, it's, it's a pity because it's actually it's late in the, the, the Latin, Latin American community from the rest of the world. And I think we have some very, very good researchers and very good students as well that can benefit from this uh, creating opportunities, uh, attending conference, meeting people, uh, actually creating opportunities for international collaboration even, even right? So I think this has a, yes. this important aspects as well. Uh, and a, another aspect of Latin CNI is uh, with, our, with our sponsors is maybe we can give opportunities for people to go to the, uh, to work to Microsoft, to work to Amazon, to Apple or, or something like that, and then give back to the community, right? We have plenty of people like that uh, here in, 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 the, in, the, in the organization committee. For example, um, Victor itself, himself, he is right now in Cambridge in Samsung and he, he is giving back. We can say the same about, about Fabian. I, think, no, I don't think Fabian is connected yet. Uh, Fabian uh, works for Adobe. We have, so we, we work, actually want to, to give something back to the community. I think we, we, that, that's very, very important. Uh, maybe we can we, we can get a few words from from Christian Rodriguez. Christian, you I know you're in Australia. Uh, how do you feel to be so far away from from America, Latin America, and then in something like this? Can you share your experience? Sure, sure, definitely. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk to everyone and and share my experience. Um, well, the big the first big conference that I attended was uh, ICCB 2016, I think. Uh, was in Chile, and uh, before of that, I, I I moved to Australia already to 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 pursue a, a master degree. So I I explored the 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 community really late, and the problem that I see at the moment that I arrived to this big conference is like I was totally alone with Matias and few Ch Chilean people that was in that conference, and we didn't know any any anybody else, right, and. Uh, uh, after like a few days, maybe five or six days, we start to meet some people that actually are working in different places at that time. Like for example, um, a, someone from a Google DeepMind, I, um, maybe Matias, you can remember, do you remember the name of- uh, a, You mean Rodrigo Benenson? Yeah, Rodrigo Benenson. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, I mean. And, yeah, and he, he, he gave us a lot of a good example. Rene Vidal, I did, we didn't know about Rene Vidal at that time. So it's really, I really appreciate the, the effort that you are making for doing this, uh, or, that, or, or we are making to do this community, uh, really far away from everyone, like uh, here in Australia, 
the, the community uh, of uh, Latin America is really small, but we are doing something like uh, there are few people from Brazil and uh, from uh, Colombia that are working here and, uh, and doing uh, things on robotics and machine learning. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, Christian, and thank you for your help. Yeah, it was a bit difficult to, to get uh, sync because uh, of the time zones that uh, I think at the end of your, your help yeah. was no, yeah. appreciated. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. Julio, I see, Julio Mendoza, I see you are here. Maybe you can, you can talk a little bit about the experience in CVPR and now you're, you were not part of the organization committee this time around, but maybe you can say a few words of your experience and, uh, and your experience with CVPR as well, Latin Cinea in CVPR. Hi, uh, Gilberto. Hi, everyone. Uh, so regarding my experience with the Latin Cinea community and these big conferences, I first I participated at the CVPR at the IC, uh, ICML in 2019, and yeah, it was it, it was a really great experience because uh, before that I just participated in like local conference or Latin American conference, but the ICML was was a very great experience. Uh, something that I I mean I value it a lot if is that uh, I met some very, I mean, people that have like a, a career, a very advanced career, I mean, postdocs or people that was working in the industry. And I think this is a very valuable experience because it helped us to, to know like the intermediate steps to, to reach at, uh, I mean, to reach uh, a similar path maybe in the career. Uh, I'm not, uh, very, I mean, I have not participated too much. Actually, this is the third conference maybe that I'm, that I'm uh, participating in the Latin, Latin Cine community, but uh, I mean, I'm, I really enjoy to, to attend the workshops and, and I think that, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a very good opportunity for everyone. Thank you, thank you, Julio. And I, I, we hope to see you in, in CPR again. Perfect. Let's see. Let's see some of somebody else. I see. May, maybe you, uh, Rodolfo, you are the newcomer to the to the community. Uh, so you were part of the organization committee this year. Have, have you? Can you share your experience as a Latin a Latin individual moving to the US and how how was it? How has been so far? Yeah. Sure. Hi everyone. Yeah, I, I, I started also like joined the, these conferences, uh, you know, participating volunteer, getting, you know, I got some grant from CVPR, ICML, and then I just decided, you know, kind of, I want to uh, help and participate of, of, you know, like of the uh, kind of organization of the conference. And it was, you know, like great uh, and a great experience, like being working with everyone, you know, like preparing the workshops. So like, uh, I, I also have like similar experience, like when, when uh, you know, when uh, I went to, to, so I went for, to Brazil for a master's and then there, like, because it was like everyone, like, you know, similar culture, everything, like the, the transition were, was like very smooth. So it, I have like a very like great and nice experience, but the transition here to US, it was a little hard because uh, the culture, you know, of the people that I have in the, it was like different, so I have to add like to, you know, like how uh, people do things, how they, they sing and how they interact. And then like, I would say also that, you know, when I attend to conference, um, some, sometimes like if you are attending along, it's, it's very hard if you don't have like someone that you can talk or, or you know, you can feel uh, engaged to. So that is like, you know, like going to a different place or participating to the conference and ask, ask questions everyone. So I really think that you know creating this uh, opportunity for for Latin American people to go share ideas and interact and do networking is great. So then when we go to other conference, we know each other, or at least you know some people that are attending to the same conference. And if we have this workshop also in the conference, that like you go to the booth and then you go and talk with those people and kind of interact, and that can create like a bit, like great experience and and a big opportunity for both, like growing, kind of sharing your research and also doing networking that 
will allow to you know keep growing the community because then you like bring people more to kind of to the thing and then those people will bring more people um yeah you just feel uh, like it is more warm and you just feel like better when you have people that you can share the ideas and you just like you know start losing the the um, uh, you know like sometimes you are shy and you just don't, don't want to speak because you feel that okay like I don't know if the person is going to understand, but when there is like more like people from Latin America, at least it's, uh, for me, it's more easy to just go to talk with the person and just ask, oh, what you're doing, what you do this and what you do that. Uh, and then the person gives me like, I don't know, like feedback and, you know, we grow together. I, I think it's, it's great like that, that, you know, that community that it has been built, um, you know, just it's, it's amazing if we can just keep growing and growing. Thank you, Dodo, for your words. Maybe I will move. I will move to some students. Or uh, I see that Jackson Mesa is here. He was one of the winners of the best papers in CEPR. I don't know, Jackson. Have you participated in some Latin AI events before CEPR, or was your first first experience? And if not, uh, can you tell us a little bit uh, how was your experience with uh, CEPR? Hello, everyone. Um, yes, my, my first experience was um, the last CVPR and this year in 2021. Um, well, it was uh, really good. I met a lot of, a lot of people uh, working on the, on the same things that uh, I am working on. And I think it's really uh, curious about um, Latin people that uh, Commonly, we don't know who is working in the same topics um, compared, for example, to to people uh, that is not or, or also or outside outside of Latin America. Um, yes, it was um, very uh, a very interesting experience. It was my first EPR and conference. I, I really enjoyed the, the, all the experience, and I met a lot of people, and and uh, it was. Uh, very, very interesting. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you a lot, Jackson. Maybe, uh, maybe you, Carmina. Carmina is a master student of mine, and he she participated in uh, in Neurips, uh, in two thousand twenty, I think, and also in CPR presenting a poster. Can, can you say a few words, Carmina? Yes, of course. Um, also, thank you for the opportunity. Um, Talking in those workshops really helped me because it was really early on on my investigation and developing my thesis. So getting feedback from people that work in in the environment can really help me to guide the work that I'm doing right now. So being part of this is also a great opportunity. Thank you, Carmina. Perfect. Um, well, who can ask? Because I, I I know I know I know some of the, of the people, but maybe uh, I don't know, you know if somebody else wants to to say a few words. Yeah, uh, I can okay. say ahead, say words. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm Leo, and I'm from. Oh, I don't have a camera. That's okay. I'm from Brazil, the University of São Paulo, as well. And I'll say that my first experience with a conference uh, was in Sipirapi in Brazil. And what I remember the most is that I had a tutorial from Nina. And it was really, it was really great. And it was good to see that other Brazilians were working in the field as well. And then my other, my next experience was CVPR 2020. And I, I don't think there was a Latinx meeting there, or if there was, I missed it because that website was very hard to navigate. And uh, I felt very lonely on that conference because it was probably one of the first online experiences for everyone since it was in June. And people didn't really know how to, <laughs> to make it work. So it was just a bunch of Zoom links. And I, I presented a poster to no one. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's great to see that now we have Latinx in CVPR and in ICCV because, well, I'm having a good experience in now seeing all your experience. Yeah, but that's, it's good to know someone, even if it's virtual. Yeah. 
Yeah, that, that's great. And also, I think an important aspect that we, we are maybe not mentioning, we haven't mentioned so far is that I think this kind of events is also, ah, right now we see you. Uh, yeah. I think this, 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 this experience, this, this, these workshops is that we, we get to inspire people, right? Because sometimes we have people from bachelor students, master's students, who that obviously we are always looking for US or UK or Europe to do research. But at the mentoring program, especially, I can, I can say that uh, one of the things that are very successful for Latin, in Latin Sinai is that the mentoring program is that you can actually give some, some opportunities to, to, for people to, to know that ah, there is this, this person doing research in Colombia and computer vision or natural language processing and so on. And I think this has been really important because we, we all have, for, for example, in my case, I did a, I did a, a mass in computer vision in, a, in Europe with a Erasmus Mundus master. So I, I was in UK, France, and Spain, and then I stayed in France for, for, a, for 10 years. So I have lots of, lots, lots of contacts. And I will say it's the same for everyone here, like uh, Victor, Matias, we all have contacts. So it's very important as well uh, as, a, as a way of giving uh, chances to people coming from Latin American countries to, to, to get this kind of access, right? That other, otherwise it will be very difficult. That, the same for the, for the mentoring, right? With, uh, with the companies, we have a, 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 an amazing roster of mentors this year. So I think that uh, you can actually benefit from, from it. I, uh, I don't know if anybody here wants to share that, if you want, uh, if you participated as a mentee or as a mentor, if you want to share a, li a, little, a, a little bit about the, that process. Has anybody been a mentee or a mentor? Mm, well, I was, a I was a mentor at some point. Uh, yeah. Anyone else want to participate? Yeah, please. Can you change your experience with the with the, with the mentor? Was yeah, the I was. Yeah, actually, I think that I was a mentor for uh, during New Rips a New Rips workshop. Uh, yeah, during the when yeah in the hot of the pandemic. <laughs> so yeah, it was an interesting experience to be honest. Uh, it was also kind of like my first men I mean formal mentorship with someone. So I think that it, it's, also, it's also like one opportunity when you can network I mean like, and, also, and probably open yourself up uh, and also receive feedback like in a shield way. So I really encourage people to sign up for the mentorship programs uh, to attend to those and to because it's like for example when you go to the conference it's cool i mean you're talking about research and oh what do you do uh, maybe some hobbies like for example some of my colleagues like they really like to go to iccd cdpr because they will meet with the all friends that did the phd with them uh, however like for networking i mean like it's i mean like you will be talking with the crowd so it's difficult to open up yourself and also to get fit but so i agree it's really it's the mentorship program that lxai and in LXCV we are also doing it's a good opportunity for all of us to get fit so i really encourage all of i mean all of you people to participate to give back to receive and yeah like grow up the community Thank you. Thank you, Victor. Uh, let's say, Ulises, can, what can you tell, what can you tell us about your experience with uh, Latin in AI so far? Uh, hello, everyone. Um, yes, I had a good experience in Latin in AI. I, uh, perhaps two years ago, I, no, I noticed about this organization and at the same time, I applied for my first New Rips conference, and of course was rejected. <laughs> and then, but uh, I applied for this workshop, and I can understand how is uh, uh, I don't know better strategies to to improve my paper, discuss with the community, discuss with the others uh, people, and 
then I try to follow this community because it's, I think it's great to, to improve uh, the our research work. This is important because, okay, we are Latin, but we also doing artificial intelligence. And I feel uh, great to, to have uh, to some, a group to discuss my, my papers and my work. Uh, I mean more uh, closely. And I think it's great. Um, I am in the government, uh, so I don't have enough time to, to work in research. So I try to, to be more efficiently in that way. And this group will uh, help me a lot to, to do that. And that's all I feel great uh, in, uh, f to be part of this community. Thank you, uh, Felices. Yeah, from for me, uh, I will give you just a uh, kind of the same kind of the same experience for me. Is uh, I always saw this as an opportunity, uh, and I, I I have to say that I'm very lucky. Of uh, here in Mexico, we have the National Con Council for Science and Technology uh, that gives scholarships to students, and I have I'm very lucky to have uh, now seven. Seven master, seven master, master in science students and three PhD students, and I, I, help, I like helping in this because I also think it's a, a way of helping my students to to connect and to be able to present their work in a safe kind of a safe place, right? Because uh, we we have traditionally for this workshop was this is more like like a social workshop, but for CPR or some of the other workshops we have these uh, either the Extended abstract that gets a, a review process from from the from the community from the program committee, or uh, in the case of CEPR, we have full papers. So it's a, a great way of people receiving feedback from the work, right? Because otherwise, uh, you try to send to a big journal or to a big conference, and uh, sometimes that uh, the comments can be intimidating. So when you present in a in a, in a setting like this, uh, it can be more sportive and you can get some, some 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 really good ideas for your research. So I think this is an important aspect as well. So this is uh, so so maybe in that regard, let's see if anybody of the new I see some new, new people like for example, Williams. Uh, I, I, have you participated in some Latin in AI? Or this is your, your first time. I know that you're working on the, the you are presenting a doctoral consortium. Uh, have you participated before? And if not, uh, what are your expectations for this uh, workshop? Hey everyone, so my name is Williams. I am from Federal University of Pernambuco in Brazil. It's fun to see that there are other Brazilians here. It's nice. This is my first experience on a big conference. No? I have participated before in other international conferences that happens in Brazil. There are SVR, that is a conference for virtual reality. SIBGRAP, that Leo had mentioned before, I have also participated in that. But in a in conference of this level, it's my first time. I am presenting here a doctoral consortium. I have received an email from a colleague of mine telling about this opportunity. And I think that is awesome because it is not very common in my university for people to present doctoral consortiums. Usually people only follow their advisor during all of the program. And I believe that presenting my, my research to someone will, will allow me to have insights from different people of different realities and different levels of experience and diverse, different levels of applications experience also. We, I work in a lab here in, in Recife, Pernambuco, in, with people of computer vision and intelli artificial intelligence. But in my application scenario, there are not a lot of contacts. So I hope that maybe someone can give a, uh, me a nice idea of application or maybe direct me on a few ideas that I have not think before. And this is it. I thank you again, Gilberto, for organizing this. It's very awesome. And it's an opportunity in our lifetime. Thank you, Williams. Nice to meet you as well. I think we'll have time to discuss later in the doctoral consortium and in the in the social hour in the social hour, like more up a social hour in Gattertown. Okay. A anybody else wants to is a newcomer that wants to share their expectations for the workshop?
Hello, uh, I'm also new in this uh, workshop. I will be talking later. And I think my expectations are to meet people in the field of computer vision, also from um, Latin background, let's say. Um, and that's it. So actually, I was very glad to, to get to know the community. Yeah, this, this is great. I think that you're, you're one of the featured speakers and we're really looking forward to, to see your presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you a lot for accepting and being part of the community. Of course, looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see, we still have uh, 30 minutes, but I, I'm having a lot of fun with this, this dynamic. John uh, Artier, uh, who are you? Can, what, what, what can you tell us about you? Hello. Hello, everyone. My name is John. Uh, I'm originally from Ecuador, but I'm currently doing my PhD in Japan at Tohoku University. Um, my background is in uh, medical engineering, and I'm studying into the AI and applications with computer vision for medical applications. So thank you for having me here and for having this opportunity to meet other Latin people working in this field. I'm excited to meet everyone or have a chance to talk with some of you and gain some context. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, John. And maybe you can consider in the future to be part uh, as, as you are having a very good experience in the Stanford IC, Stanford and Japan. Maybe you can consider to be part of the mentoring program in the future. I would love to. Thanks. Thank you. Perfect. So let's go with Jorge Sanchez. Well, what can you tell us about you? Yeah. Hi, I'm Jorge Sanchez from Argentina. Um, I, I'm a researcher from CONICET here, which is the National Science uh, Institution. Um, I'm, I'm really glad to be here at this panel um, and giving us the opportunity to, to participate uh, in this type of conferences. Uh, given the, the, this pandemic situation, it's nice to have the opportunity to be to be on different conferences that otherwise would be very difficult to, to be. Uh, I mean, living in the south power part of the world, um, traveling from Argentina to Europe and the US, uh, you, you can afford it once a year uh, with our budget, uh, but with this type of, 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 of endeavors, make it makes the, the connections a lot more easier. So, so thanks to the organizers for, for, for the event. Hey, Gilberto, can I say something? Uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I, I think I want to say thanks to Jorge because I believe that he helped us uh, as a reviewer during uh, the first select CV uh, in CVPR. Uh, and actually, like Jorge, if I mean, correct me if I'm wrong because sometimes we have like this uh, people with similar name, but uh, Jorge is one of the authors of uh, Bilat. The Bilat frame, uh, of, I mean, like there was a framework before, before learning. That was very popular for the yeah. most people. And yeah, that, was, that, that was before convolutional networks arrived. So. <laughs> that's it, that's it's it, like so. a prehistoric of, of computer vision. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, are you... and, and that stuff. Yes. Exactly. I mean, uh, it has been revamped. By, there is now net <laughs> So. <laughs> yeah. uh, Every, everything comes back uh, time to time. Yeah. No, th thank you for the organization. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, we are a lot of Jorge Sanchez in the world. Yeah. Well, nice to meet you, Jorge. And nice to meet you, too. If I were to, to keep uh, talking during the, during the workshop. So let's see. Somebody else, somebody else. Uh, Roman Alejandro, who are you? What can you tell us about you? Hi, you see, you see, Roman? Ah, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Uh, hi. <laughs> um, well, um, I'm a researcher from University Industrial de Santander, WIS, in Colombia. Um, well, I'm just beginning in this, in this research, in this research uh, field. Uh, I have like two years in experience. Um, I just graduated from the as an electronic engineer. My background is 
from computational imaging. Um, and I said that this is this seems very cool activity for uh, get to get all this computer vision research from Latin America. I'm very happy for it. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Uh, Roman Rodolfo. Uh, Mauricio. Is Mauricio my student or Mauricio or some other Mauricio? Yes, <laughs> your student. Yeah. 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 So Mauricio is also a, a master student of mine, a, a brilliant, a brilliant one. Uh, what, what can you tell us about your experience? I think you presented in Euripus and also for CPR you have a paper, right? What can you tell us about your experience with CPR so far? Right. Um... For for CVPR, uh, there there was um, there were some interesting posters. There were some interesting uh, tutorials and presentations, uh, and the mentoring uh, it was uh, uh, very also very interesting. Um, so uh, I would like for everyone to attend to. <laughs> To the to every every event they can. <laughs> um, I I presented a poster in the CBPR, um, and some uh, th there was some people interested in the in in my work. It was uh, about um, uh, a technique for efficient learning. So if you are interested in that subject, I, uh, maybe I, I can help you with that. Yeah, and you will be presenting a poster today as well, right? I, I, later. Yes, right. Thank you. Uh, ah, we have a, a newcomer as well. I see that you connected Miguel. Uh, Miguel is a colleague of mine, part of the machine learning group. And th this is uh, his first time as a part of the organization committee. He's one of the persons uh, in charge of the doctoral construction. Uh, Miguel, uh, what can you tell us about your expectations and uh, maybe a little bit about the doctoral construction? Uh, I also have to say he he is expressing president of the Mexican Society of Artificial Intelligence. So he is someone who knows a little bit about it, uh, doing these kind of efforts in Latin America. What can you tell us, Miguel? Hi, guys. Good day for everyone. Well, it's, it's a pleasure for me here, Gilberto. I am really, really glad about all, all the work done by the organizers. I think it's really wonderful. My expectations, just for the first, this first edition of this workshop, I think it will be quite nice, very specific for uh, computer vision applications, uh, but particularly for the um, doctoral consortium, you know, we have, uh, some 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 submissions, of course, but right now what we have is um, the opportunity to to have um, some uh, a particular, you know, it's little <laughs> it's a little weird. That you want to have a doctoral consortium, a consortium, sorry, inside inside uh, a workshop. You know, normally it's for a conference, an entire conference, and now just for this uh, this first edition we have. Uh, at the end, three, three, three doctoral proposals. I think it will be quite nice and a very good uh, opportunity to, to connect with uh, some colleagues and peers. Um, I think it will be nice for the PhD students to have, to have uh, a good, uh, you know, uh, a, a good advice of uh, their, their current work status of the, what they have, even if it's, they have partial experiments or just the the, the the ideas to for the for the work you know I think it will be quite nice and maybe the, there could be some opportunities to collaborate you know I think this is this first edition uh, really used for for the the path we we have for the organization I think it, it, it will be uh, a successful event thank you okay. Gilberto thank yeah. you a lot Miguel. Yeah, I, I saw that also uh, Fabian, Fabian Cava just connected, I think. Uh, Fabian, we were doing kind of a social social meeting and talking a little bit about everything, but uh, maybe in your case, uh, since you were at Adobe, can you tell us your experience? How, how was it uh, to go from, from your country 
viewers and start working on Adobe. And also, I, you have been very active uh, helping with the uh, Latin CNI. Can you share us uh, a little bit of your ex uh, experience? Yeah, thank you, Gilberto, for for welcoming to the discussion. Uh, sorry, I cannot unmute my camera, but I actually commuting. Uh, yeah, so so yes, yeah, Gilberto mentioned I did my PhD in Saudi Arabia in computer vision. I work in action recognition videos. Uh, I stayed there for a couple of years, four years, and then I moved now to the US and I'm working at Adobe as a research scientist. And yeah, I think this is a great initiative. I remember when Victor mentioned about it, and this is something we thought we should kind of like start doing in the computer vision community. I remember when we were attending CVPR a few years ago, we always have one or two tables of Latinx people like just talking, but I can see now how this is scaling up and how can we're building a community. So I think this is a great initiative. And I think Gilberto, you have been one of the leaders. So I, I want to thank you now publicly to, to really pushing this forward. Uh, yeah, really glad to help and connect with any uh, students or like potential mentees that would like to know more about my career or like if they need any help as well, like just feel free to connect with me. Thank you a lot, Fabian. Thank you, thank you a lot. So we're almost done. Uh, maybe we can, uh, you will take care of the first session of the presenters, uh, Victor. Uh, maybe you will kind of start, uh, Estefania. We just got some bad news from from Sandra uh, Avila. Yes. She yes, had yes. an accident, uh, not a very, very bad, uh, but, yeah, but yeah, she's, she's in a hospital. So unfortunately, we won't be able to, to have her presentation. Uh, thank you a lot from Luis Alberto Muñoz, who's uh, sharing a book he's working. He's a, he's a colleague here in Mexico, and he did his PhD in, uh, in Oxford, and uh, he's very close to here at Tecno Monterrey. Maybe we can, we can talk a little bit later, and I, you are welcome to join the efforts of LXI. Thank you. So we have two, two talks. I mean, we, we had three talks, mm -hmm. uh, Stefania Talavera one for Ali Tabet and one from Sandra Avila. I think we can, we can, and you will moderate this, this uh, right, uh, Victor? Yes, please help me uh, switching the admin to them such that they can share the screen, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, is it Stefania? Uh, yeah. Yes. Has Stefania joined the Zoom link? Mm -hmm. oh. Uh, I'm here, but I cannot share. Do I need to? Uh, Daniel, are you in a, maybe you? I think you are an administrator. Can you can you make her uh, co-host, please? Yes, one moment. Thank you. So uh, you should have uh, yes. permission now <laughs> or rights to share. Hmm. Sorry, it's asking me to. Ah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it was me. For a second. Sorry. No, no worries. Don't worry. Oh, I need to re enter. One oh. second. It's fine. Yeah, so it's unfortunate that Sandra had the accident. Yeah. So I think that in that case, well, there will be like 15 minutes uh, gap. So I think yeah, we, if, we, I yeah. not, if I'm not wrong, like do we have, we have the break session afterwards, right? Yeah, so we can may, maybe we can continue with the social hour a little bit longer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Oh, Stephanie. Uh, or we can go ahead and have the two presentations and then we can, we can do something else. <clears throat> so it's, I, think the, I see the presentation, Stephanie. Yeah, Do I don't see it, but I, yeah, I see it. Okay, you can, you can see it, right? Good. Yeah, now I can see it. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> then I start with yeah, just let, one. Let me introduce yourself. So first, so <laughs> yeah. Uh, as, as, uh, for those who just joined, uh, the purpose of the invited talks is to give the stage to, I mean, like, 
let's say not established professors, those who like, for example, have like several talks during, usually in ICCB or CPR, there are professors who give five tips or more talks during the conference. Uh, instead, what we wanted to do is like to give the stage to like new faces such that uh, they inspire us of how they reach uh, their status, their status in their career. So Stefania was, uh, was actually nominated by some of the members of the community and we are really pleased that she accepted the invitation. She's an assistant professor of the University of Twente, and she's interested in the intersection of data science and behavioral analysis. I'm really looking forward for your talk. About, I mean, especially the egocentric perception bit. Uh, uh, yeah, take it from there. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you for inviting me. I'm very happy to be here, as I said before. Um, so in this presentation, I will be talking about two things. <laughs> Half of it, I will be talking about myself, no? uh, how I reach where I am now. And then I will be discussing egocentric perception that is the research that um, yeah, I find appealing. Okay, yeah. So about me, uh, I started, I did my bachelor studies on uh, electronics. Uh, I did uh, electronical engineering in the University of Balearic Islands. Uh, I don't know if you know where this is. This is uh, in a university, small university uh, in Mallorca, it's uh, in the Mediterranean Sea, and it's a really beautiful place. But what I did was very far from what I'm doing now. So I was working with my protoboard, the circuits, getting signals, analyzing it. After that, I moved to Barcelona uh, because I was interested in biomedical engineering. So my master was focused on that. Uh, Barcelona was also very nice, as everyone knows. <laughs> but uh, also the topics I was working on were very uh, different from what I was, I'm doing now. So we, I studied from physio physiology to uh, biochemistry to bioinformatics, all an introduction because our backgrounds uh, from the people that joined the, these master studies were very diverse. I had um, peers that were working on physics, what ca came from a physics background, from chemistry and electronics, for instance. Um, I was lucky to meet my supervisor, I would say, because I'm happy where I am now. Uh, and uh, through the master thesis project that I did in computer vision, I started my PhD degree. This PhD degree was under the umbrella of being a sandwich PhD degree. So I did, I um, followed two years at the University of Barcelona and then two years at the University of Groningen. Um, this University of Groningen is in, in the Netherlands, North Netherlands. It's a bit isolated, but very beautiful. Um, this has positive aspect that I had two supervisors, so Petia Radeva and Nikolai Petkov. Um, who could bring different perspectives into the project and no one could mentor and guide me in different ways. So that was positive, sometimes negative, but in general positive. Um, but the plus thing of this um, sandwich degree, this 50-50 uh, uh, position, was that I could work with two different teams, the one at, in Barcelona and the one in, in Netherlands. And it was very, very positive. So this is something that I highly recommend to everyone. Um, I don't know if 50-50 is always possible, but uh, research visit three months, six months abroad in a different research group, that could be ideal, I would say. So one side I had my group in Barcelona, who was mostly focused on egocentric perception that later I will uh, discuss. Uh, and then I had the University of Groningen people and <laughs> team there that uh, was very diverse. So actually I was the only one working on my project. And then every, actually almost every different PhD was uh, approaching different um, uh, problems. But of course, always with the backbone of using machine learning, computer vision, time series analysis, et cetera. So it was very, uh, well, it was a very enriching uh, period and a set of years. Um, and okay, I only also added here some nice pictures of Groningen, not to, just to be fair. Um, after that, and during the last year of my PhD, I joined at the University of Groningen as a lecturer. Um, that it was not my, my initial plan, but it, was, it ended up being a very good uh, decision uh, because I could learn about teaching. Sometimes when you want to stay in academia, you, you forget that you need to be a teacher. <laughs> and this helped me uh, 
training myself, let's say. So I've been to, I was, I was two years as a lecturer while finishing the PhD in the first year. And I was teaching master and bachelor students. And I was learning how to be a, a, a teacher, you know, how to give a session like lectures and how to supervise. And as I say here, this is a never ending process. Um, and I was doing little research because of the type of position. And after that, I, I, I joined the University of Twente, this was in the Netherlands, different city. And there I'm, I'm following my research lines. I have more time for research, that that's what I was looking for, but I'm still a part-time teacher, let's say. So good, now going into egocentric perception and why I add here my is because I follow my own way of uh, um, working on this field. Um, egocentric perception can be understood from many different subfields. Like, okay, it's applied to many different subfields. You have egocentric perception uh, when working on robot localization, how a robot interacts with the surrounding environment. You also have it in virtual reality, you know, what the person is experiencing with these glasses, how the environment surrounding the person affects this experience. Also, you have it in sports uh, field, uh, analyzing how the, the yeah, the, the sports person is uh, performing, and you also have it in activity recognition with computer vision, etc. Um, when it goes to my egocentric perception, I linked it to lifestyle understanding and analysis, and this is where human behavior analysis came in the title of the talk. So, to understand how a person behaves throughout time, you no, know, to get a behavior um, information you need life uh, long periods of time to be recorded and then later analyzed. And this is where life logging enters. So life logging is the logging of your life. So it's this uh, creating a diary of what is happening. And this uh, initially was introduced to help people uh, suffering from Alzheimer's disorder when we, come, when we go to egocentric perception in, in computer vision. It can also be used to self for self-awareness. No, what Tell me an objective description of my my behavior, and it also can be used for evaluating the performance of groups of people. Um, yeah, so in, in, my, in my work, I work on this live logging using uh, wearable cameras. And uh, these wearable cameras record an egocentric view, <laughs> a view from the person of what is happen happening throughout the, the time. And you might be, um, or you may already know some of these uh, devices here, these wearables. You have this. Uh, I don't see. I don't know if you see my my mouse, but you have the Google glasses. You have the GoPro, among others. These are just uh, a sample of what you can find. Uh, we used um, the one that I'm wearing here on the left. This is called Narrative Clip for the collection of the data set. And why did we use this? Uh, this camera allows us to record uh, two up to two or three pictures per minute, depending on the movement, uh, for like 10 hours throughout the day. Um, that means, okay, with a battery that can handle that. If you would be using the GoPro, it has a battery life of X amount of hours and is um, less comfortable to to where to record your daily routine, let's say. Uh, so this camera actually produces uh, egocentric photo stream, you know, these sequences of photos that describe an egocentric perspective, a first person view of the environment. Uh, so when we were this, uh, used to wear these, uh, these uh, cameras, we would, would create this visual diary that is several days of the life of the person describing the, the activities and the, the daily routine. So to, this, to these images, we could ask questions. And this is actually, <clears throat> this is actually what my PhD thesis was about. I ended up with, a, this is the cover of my thesis and I addressed many questions. I built uh, different algorithms and uh, pipelines to be able to extract information from these videos. And just to, to kind of conclude, I also wanted to mention what can come next because this egocentric perception uh, field has been addressed, as I said before, from many different perspectives. But nowadays there is a, an increased use of wearable devices and you could ask many questions here. You could try to understand uh, many different situations. So the combination of this, uh, the, the output of the sensor could be very interesting to analyze. Also, I don't know if you uh, read this uh, la last news about Raven, uh, Raven stories and Facebook, they now um, released uh, these smart glasses that, uh, well, you could already see here that there is some um, 
people that are supporting the field or finding interesting to invest in. And also uh, for security reasons in uh, several countries, actually the other day I met a policeman in Germany that was wearing a wearable camera and I thought, well, this, this would, would be interesting to analyze. Um, but there are many other people that are finding it uh, needed uh, for other reasons. So this is where I think it will go next. And yeah, I want to conclude not to take more time than needed. Thank you for the attention. And okay, I, here I left a QR in case you want to contact me and know more a bit about what I just mentioned. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks a lot, uh, Stefania. So by the way, now we have some time for questions, especially like considering that there, are, there is uh, unfortunately the last speaker of the first round of invited uh, talks is uh, got injured, so we have a bit of time. So feel free to post your questions or to mute the camera. William, I think that you are raising the hands. Do you want to ask a question? Yeah, I want to ask a question. Hi, Stefania. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. My name is William. I am a PhD candidate from Brazil. And I work with behavior analysis, specifically with emotional recognition. I want to ask you, because today I understood you are working with images and images from an egocentric view, but also you have pointed out to a few possible scenarios using biosensors that could help to understand better how the humans are behaving. Have you ever worked on or have you ever seen some research paper that focused on emotion recognition in this scenario? Yes, um, you pronounce my name very nicely, William. <laughs> um, yes, nice. there are many, actually many works that uh, do emotion recognition. Um, okay, you know that from facial uh, no, expressions. What happens is that from our images, we, we try it that way. We run those um, algorithms and methods, but they are challenging images. So um, there are works, we did it, but the performance is not optimal. Can I ask a follow-up question? Yeah, sure. Tell me. I, I am working with context information <coughs> together with facial expressions and other cues from body language. And I would like to, to hear from you if you think that context is really something that is representative in this, in this scenario. So we can take in consideration that the person is on a party. So maybe it's feeling a little more happier than it would be if it would be at home. If this line of thought has some, some sense for you, makes a lot of sense for you. Sorry, I was, I was uh, not feeling fine, <laughs> I needed to drink. Let me actually build a bit on the previous question and then we will do this one. Um, we actually, what we did, because um, the, this, this field, as I said, started with emotion recognition. I mean, working with people with Alzheimer's and also we trained with people with depression. So the idea was to try to find positive memories to be retrieved. So actually what we record in our daily life is not always showing the, the, the direct feeling of the person. So, <coughs> sorry, I didn't talk for the whole morning and now I, I get very dry. <laughs> this is very uncomfortable. Um, but- Please take your time. Uh, yeah, an egocentric perception shows the other person emotion, but not yours, um, unless you have a mirror in front of you the whole time, and that's not the case. So actually, psychologists say that what the other person is tend to experience, you tend to experience it too. So it's not that you have someone in front of you crying and you are laughing, even though it can happen, right? Um, so we were mostly extrapolating based on the other person uh, face to, to see how the person was feeling. To be, to be later used for certain purposes, not to be retrieved or find positive moments of my life, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't know if that's answered your first question, <laughs> but uh, we, yeah. we address it that way. Yeah. And so, the second- oh, Sorry, please continue. No, no, tell me, I was, it was fine. No, no, I, I, it's not that I thought that uh, uh, the, you finished to answer the question, so, but it seems like it, it's the second part now. Yes, actually, I wanted to ask him to, to tell, give me again the second part because I was thinking, sorry, William. Okay, no, that's no problem. 
I work with multiple cues to detect emotion and facial expressions is actually only one of them. The other two I work with is body language and context. The context information should just background of a picture. So if someone is at a party, it's more probable that they are feeling happy instead of feeling sad. And you take this into consideration. I, what I wanted to ask you is that if you think that this makes some sense in the way of in the wild classification, so you are walking towards on the street using a egocentric view, and we can take into consideration how where the, paper, the, the this person is, and then we take another sensors and you combine all of these, and then we make a prediction. Do you think that this is something that could happen in real life? Yes, I think, yes. I mean, this always, you, you should be involving, I would say, psychologists because they will give a more solid um, baseline, let's say. But I would say yes, from what I remember when I was working on this field, we were also even taking into account the, the scene, not only based on localization, that that's, that's actually a very good idea, but also even the colors, like uh, being in the nature gives you peace and you should be... Uh, uh, happy, but okay, a person with depression can be very unhappy also in a forest. And um, so it really depends, uh, but you could generalize, yes, if that's the purpose of the of your work, no? But if you want to do a personalized uh, analysis, then you should ask questions to the to the person, no? to the user, let's say, in my case, users of, of the sensors. Thank you. Sure. Okay, so Vamos a tomar, uh, let's take another question. So, Christian, uh, you will be next uh, for Rodolfo, who, who was also in the queue, uh, for asking a question. Probably we can do it after Ali's talk. So I probably, perhaps we will have time there. So please write down your question, Rodolfo. And Christian, go ahead. Thank you, Victor. I, I just want to mention, it's very interesting that uh, in the community that we are talking here, there are many people that is uh, working on video analysis. Uh, Victor, Fabian, myself, uh, uh, I just want to let it, uh, make like a, a highlight of that. But apart of that, I have a, a question like in the ego view, um, I think my understanding of what you were uh, saying is like, uh, you are taking a picture every, uh, four picture every minute, isn't it? Two up two to three pictures per minute. So it's low frame rate. So these two to three pictures per minute, uh, there is any word that is trying to uh, recover the temporal uh, aspect between the, between these frames. I, I can imagine that if, let's say someone with Alzheimer's is trying to find where is the wallet that they live in some place, uh, you can miss that information because you 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 just take the pictures in bad positions, right? If that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah, it, it makes sense. Uh, not everything can be recorded, and there was there were works on object retrieval. No, like let's find where the, the object was last time. No, it, it was recorded, kind of. And the thing is that um, it would be perfect to have a camera that can record the whole day through, uh, but uh, it's not the case. Um, there, there are no such camera with that long uh, battery life. So I see the problem that you are mentioning and there are works retrieving objects, but there is no solution to fill in the gaps because the information is not there. Mm -hmm. But it would be interesting because that's something that I was also testing with the students. I did not mention it, but being a lecturer gives you a lot of uh, projects to think about, etc., uh, where you could fill in the gaps uh, between the, you know, these um, time frames where you have nothing, but you know from previous day what was happening there, no? So maybe this is um, a bit of a storyline that could be followed, but yeah. Mm, very, very interesting. Thank you. Mm. Sure. Interesting, interesting question and really interesting talk. Thank, thank you a lot, Stefania, for yeah, sharing your, I mean, a bit of your life and also your topic of research. So I, if you have time, like you, I mean, feel free to stay until the end for yeah. hanging out with people. Yeah. Thank you. So, okay, let's continue then with the next speaker uh, of this round, first round of invited talks. Uh, it's truly my honor to introduce Ali Tavit. Ali actually was the first postdoc that I encountered in my research life. <laughs> when a young Colombian guy who, who speak 
well, broken or more broken English than he speaks now. I arrived to Saudi Arabia, afraid to talk to people. Ali welcomed me and helped me like during all my PhD to, let's say, to stay on the path and to keep forward and never give up. So it's really my pleasure to introduce Ali. Uh, he's, a, he's now a manager at Facebook Applied Research uh, in Zurich. So he's working in the actually with the Facebook, uh, the FRL, Facebook Reality Labs. And I'm really looking forward for what he will tell us today. Thanks, Ali. <clears throat> Thank you, Victor. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, thank you, everybody, for being here. Um, let me try to share my screen. I think I might have to do the. Yeah, Daniel, can, that, uh, can you make uh, Ali co host, please? Yes, one moment, please. Uh, uh, I just have give him rights to, well, to make him a co host. Uh, just I don't see him. You, go, you, go, you can go to participants, find a participant. Okay. Ali, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, 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 I think I'm back now. <laughs> okay, Sorry. can you share uh, now? Uh, yes, yes, I can, okay. Okay, perfect. All Thank right, you. I think... I think you can see my screen now. If not, just let me know. Yes. Uh, and let's just put this. <clears throat> All right, great. All right. Uh, well, hello, everyone. Thank you for being here today. Uh, I'm very, very happy to be with you. Uh, so I wish you all a good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in the world. So my name is Ali Tabin. Um And today, uh, so I have this kind of uh, cryptic title. Uh, for this presentation, but uh, let me may maybe start with a little TLDR of what I want to do today. Um, so instead of going into uh, science technical work, what I want to talk to you about is basically how I have and how you can grow your career uh, beyond just learning technical skills. So what I refer to when I say technical skills is obviously the things you learn in your degree, during your PhD, by doing the work, by writing the papers. But I honestly believe your life experiences have a direct effect, a direct positive effect on, on how your career grows and how your career evolves. Um, <clears throat> and the main thing, uh, the main takeaway that, uh, that I want you to take from, from this presentation is the importance of diversity in your life. So in a world that is so well connected today, being uh, immersed in these diverse environments can have an immense effect on who you become uh, as a person and as a researcher. Uh, so what we want to do today is, <clears throat> I wanna tell you a bit about my personal journey, some of the things that I've done and how they have shaped me and how they have made me the person I am today uh, and how they have helped me build my career. Uh, and then along the way, maybe we'll talk a little bit about uh, computer vision science. Uh, I might mention some, some of the work that <laughs> I have done in the past and the things that I'm trying to do today. So really the journey of, of my life is, is a bit multicultural. So I was, uh, 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 sorry, uh, yeah, I was, uh, I was born in, in Lebanon. This is a tiny little country in, in the Middle East, a very nice and beautiful place uh, in the mid eighties. Um, and because of uh, some of the political instability that happened over there, my parents decided to move all the way across the world to Colombia, another much bigger country, uh, equally beautiful, uh, where I spent most of my life, um, grew up in there. And that's, you know, kind of my connection to the Latinx community. Um, it's, uh, it, th this was the beginning of, of trying to feel like a, like a multicultural person. Uh, being raised in, in, in this kind of society with, with a different background. Um, and all across, I've, I've had the pleasure to live in a few other places. Uh, I did my PhD at the University of Dundee in Scotland, where, where I spent four years. 
<clears throat> and for those who live in Europe uh, and in the UK particularly, you understand how diverse these environments are, uh, number one. And number two, how different they are from these other places that I've mentioned. So it's, this, this was a, a, an interesting experience. And for the vast majority of, of my professional time, I spent it in, in Saudi Arabia, at the King Abdullah University of Science and Technology. This is where I had the pleasure of, of meeting Victor, where we, where we did a lot of work together. Um, and just recently, I moved to Switzerland, where I live right now. I'm in Zurich, uh, part of the Facebook Reality Labs. Um, so it's, it's, nice. it's nice to be able to or to heal this privilege of, of living and moving around the world, but it's, it's obviously a bit challenging. So for all of us who, who've had to move around, move to new places, the, uh, there are some challenges that are innate with it. You know, you feel like you have to restart your life every time. Um, and then you feel like you have to understand these cultural subtleties of, of the world. These things are a bit different from what you used to. And this all takes a bit of time, starting a new job, starting a new education path. These are difficult, building new social circles. Um, if you are going through that and you're feeling this right now, you know, know that you're not alone. We all go through this uh, and uh, always reach out to, to everybody that you know when you need help because, you know, they, we all give each other support. But beyond the challenges, there are a lot of benefits from doing this. You know, the, the idea of discovering new places and experiences is, is, is unique and it's really good. And I would say, you know, building new social circles, that is a challenge, but that's also a benefit. It's, it's getting to know new people and understanding diversity. Um, learning, you, you're going to learn something new. This is why you're moving to, to this new place, so that's good for you. <clears throat> and the biggest thing is... Uh, you know, you will be, uh, you you will become more culturally diverse, and that, that's kind of the the thing what I want to get to uh, today. Uh, and what is what is this idea of cultural diversity? Um, so, if you look at the Wikipedia definition of of culture, and I think this comes from some very old work, uh, the main thing about this sentence is that. The, the, the culture of people is, is a combination of many things. You know, you see these uh, highlighted words in here, behaviors and norms and knowledge, beliefs, laws, customs, capabilities. This, this is what makes us who we are at a certain culture. And this is also what differentiates between one culture and the other. So the more you know these places, the more you visit these places, the more diverse you are, the easier it becomes for you to work with other people to build new bonds, to engage in new types of work. Um, and it has had a very positive effect for me. And I'll talk about one specific example. So this was the team the, or some portion of the team that I had to work with when I was a research scientist uh, at CAUS between 2019 and 2021. There's a lot of uh, familiar faces who I think are with us in, in this call today. But if you look at, by only looking at names and, and, and faces and all that, this, this was truly a, a multicultural team. Uh, people that left their, their homes, came to a new place. They didn't know much about it. They took that risk. They wanted to engage and they wanted to learn something. So that was, there was a, a challenge in there, which is for me or the work that I was doing, was to be able to positively, positively engage with everybody. Uh, and when we say that engagement is, it has to be mutually beneficial, you know, as I, I will gain from it, but, but I need everybody also to gain for it. Um, and the main thing that helped me was, was having this diverse background. So at that time I had, you know, born in Lebanon, lived in there for a bit, grew up in Colombia, lived in Europe for, for a bit, and then came to Saudi Arabia. Uh, I had some luck, the team was composed. There was a lot of people from Colombia. There was a lot of people from Latin America. There was a lot of people from Arabic backgrounds and other things. So what I found out was that it, it was easier for me to engage with people and it was easier for me to build trust with people because I was already exposed to these things. And I'm gonna talk about two 
major outcomes that I personally found beneficial. Uh, and I hope that you think are beneficial too for your next interactions. Um, but before that, I just want you to remember, if you remember one thing from this is when you're working with these teams, you know, there's always this idea of, of who is more important. Is it the person or is it maybe the project that, that you want? So I, I always think, you know, and, and you, you should have, your work to be people centric, you know, when you focus on people first, the benefits of, of work will always come after. Okay. Because you want your people to, to be successful. You want people to move forward. And that's the only way you can get them to engage. You should always try to build trust. Um, and the best way, the easiest way to do this is to always be diverse is to always engage in, in these opportunities. Um, and that's 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 how that's how it helped me. The first benefit I got for it was work. You know, we had there's going to be a few very quick slides about some of the work that I did in there. But the main idea behind it was because I was able to work with different people. We got different perspectives of of the same type of work. One type of work that that we were focused on was to develop efficient models over here. So I'm just going to skip over these ones in there. But the main idea in here was we wanted to develop uh, new models for uh, <clears throat> computer vision and deep learning models on point clouds. And we wanted to focus on doing efficient models. Over there. And, and I was able to, I was working with three different groups and each group was working on different aspects of this work. Because you can get exposed to all these ideas together, you can see a bigger picture and say, okay, if we combine these three different things together, which I'm mentioning, we can actually work into creating, you know, this uh, <clears throat> this this efficient model. So it helps you. It helps you to uh, to know a lot of people. So the other benefit is is for me was to be able to find my my strengths in in my career. Um, for those who, who are used to a bit of tech career jargon, you know, there, there are people who develop their lives as individual contributors, and there are people who develop their lives as people managers. They both involve equal growth. They're, they're both equally important. Uh, contrary to common belief, becoming a manager is not really a promotion. It's just becoming something different. Uh, I, I became a people manager because, you know, this, I like this. This is... I realized that this is what I like to do. And I realized this because I got to work with a lot of people and because I got to work with, with different kinds of people. It, it's helped me achieve, you know, whatever success I can claim today. And this is kind of the work that I'm doing. Um, how do you do this? You know, there's, 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 there's no defined recipe for it, but I think there are two major factors that, that always help your life. The first one is, is, you know, you need a bit of luck. Uh, so I use luck and serendipity a bit uh, interchangeably in here, but you know, serendipity is when luck plays to your favor. But um, I put a quote in here from Guy Raz, who uh, he's a podcaster and he wrote a book where he interviews a lot of successful entrepreneurs. He always ends his interviews asking people how much do they attribute their success to luck. Uh, and you know, there are various degrees of, uh, of answers. But there's always some luck in your life. So we're, we're always going to get some sort of luck in our lives. You know, you wait for it and hopefully it helps you. I didn't choose to be born where I was born or to live where I, where I lived. This was choices beyond my control. So there was some luck in there, but I, I used that to my favor at some point. And then the other part is, is hard luck and, and resilience. You know, luck comes to us, to all of us at some point. So this is where we kick in with some hard luck. Like I said, new experiences are hard. So you put some resilience in there, but it is worth your effort to do. Um, so I leave you with, uh, with a little bit of advice in here. And it's, you know, explore the world. You know, don't let go of these opportunities to take new jobs, take new uh, internships in other countries. Always keep an open mind. Um, I remember when I moved to Saudi Arabia, as many people that were you know, that moved from abroad there. Um, we, we were told about, you know, why are you going there? This, this, this is a, a strange place. There was always some 
um, bad media attached to it. But, you know, always keep an open mind. I think for me, this was one of the best experiences that I had. Um, don't be afraid of, of these new challenges of traveling the world. I <clears throat> have been to many countries now and I actually have a, 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 you know, a mild or like moderate phobia of flying, but I, I still do it. It's, it's, it's a bit of a challenge, but you, you still go. It's, it's all worth it at the end. Um, and lastly, I just wanted to leave you with uh, some of the best books that I've read uh, and uh, that have helped me personally in growing. I think you know a few of them. And the last one here on the right, Talking to Strangers by Malcolm Gladwell. Um, I really adv advise you this. He, he goes over the whole idea of why it's important to talk to other people and to understand who they are as a person. Um, so this was our TLDR. I'm putting it again in here. I hope you find some of this conversation useful. Uh, and I want to thank you for inviting me. Thank you for listening to me. Hopefully I'm not too much over time. I think I am a little bit. But uh, if you have any questions uh, today, please let me know. If at any point, you know, you're feeling alone, you're feeling sad, you're feeling like you're in a new place, You things are hard at work, things are hard personally, also reach out to me, to anybody that you know, uh, stay there, this is all worth it, for sure. Thank you. Thank you, Ali. Uh, I mean, really, I think that uh, this is one of the things, like, obviously, like from a third party perspective who don't know Ali, I would say like, oh yeah, this sounds really honest, but as a, someone who have, I mean, who is a friend of him, I can really say that he's truly honest. So I think that, yeah, we, you know, when you have the, when you do the PhD, how is it? Like when you do the PhD, you have a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, probably we coach uh, some. I mean, some of the points here and there we debate about those. <laughs> uh, <before. laughs> Saudi Arabia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Any question from the audience? Hmm? Let me double check in Facebook or YouTube. Uh, yeah, so Ali, where are Oh, Rodolfo has a question. Plus, please, Rodolfo, unmute yourself. Yeah, hi, thank you, Ali. It was like a great, a great talk, talk, like, you know, solution, party journey, like going from Lebanon to Colombia, back to Saudi Arabia. You know, that's like, when you meet that, a lot of people, it's amazing. So I have two questions. One, uh, I just, I, I'm just curious, like, uh, you know, what, how is your approach actually, like when you, uh, engage with new people like you know even if there is a language barrier there like how you actually uh, you know talk with a stranger like if you have like a, a specific like of the tip the ones that you use the most like if I don't know like what what do you suggest like you just go direct to talk with the person or what would be like the best approach in that yeah <clears throat> thank, thank you for that question I mean this is I recognize how hard this is uh, so the first thing you need to do is, you know, uh, know that it is hard. So don't feel bad that you might be struggling to do it because it, it's a difficult thing to do. Um, I found, uh, and I found this recently, when you approach it with honesty, when you, when you need to engage with somebody and you tell them, I understand that there's a barrier between us because either of our cultures or, or of language, um, this kind of sets the tone from the beginning that <clears throat> your intentions are always good. So I, I want to engage with you because I want to have a productive relationship. Um, and this helps. The other thing is for me is listening. So a lot of listening, giving the opportunity to people for people to talk, try to understand what is it that, uh, that they want to achieve. So for example, if it's on a, on a professional basis um, and this, this is what I do is listen to what people want to do, what is it that they want out of this professional engagement um, and try to base the discussion based on that. So setting some clear expectations at the beginning, being honest about the difficulty of the exchange just relaxes people. And then on top of that, care about people from up on a personal uh, level, like deep care on a personal level becomes very important. So for example, what I try to do with the teams that I've worked on is always have a personal relationship 
beyond work. I try to find out what are the things that they like to do. Do they like to go to, you know, specific social events, specific restaurants, try to organize these things. Um, people see that you have good intentions and, and it always helps. Um, so I hope that's, that kind of answers your question. But, you know, remember, don't feel bad if you're struggling to do this because it is hard and that's okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. That's great. Um, yeah, I guess a lot of people are... are you know, want to ask that, I just have like this quick, like, you know, like if you just have not one idea, like based, as you said that it is very important kind of to focus on people first. So what are, what are your thoughts, you know, like just going to the artificial intelligence things, how we can make actually artificial intelligence focus on people first? Like is, what are your thoughts on that area? Like how it can be more diverse and how it can put people first and not just the, the final goal. Yeah. Okay. So that, that's also a, uh, uh, it's become a controversial topic, unfortunately, but I think we should focus on solving the problems that affect people directly. Uh, this, if, if we focus on that, then we're still putting people first. I know we're not very good at doing that. So even, you know, whether it's universities or companies, we've all made a lot of mistakes, but we, we, need, to, we need to try to focus on solving the problems that affect people directly, you know, whether it's healthcare, mobility, uh, transportation, education, and, and things like that. Uh, it's a big challenge, but, uh, but you know, if, if we focus on that, then, then hopefully the AI that we're building is for the benefit of humanity. Yeah, great. Thank you very much, Ali. Thank you. Thanks, Rodolfo. Uh, so Fabian have a question, so please unmute yourself, Fabian. Yeah, so thank you, Ali, for this inspiring talk. So I was kind of like one of the Ali's mentees when I went to Saudi Arabia, similar to Victor, and I can tell he's a great mentor. So I really enjoy listening to this talk and like seeing these organizing thoughts. So I think this also inspires me. Like now that I'm almost transitioning into a role where I can also mentor people, I think it was really helpful for me to listen to this talk. Uh, so yeah, thank you, Ali. So, but my question is more about related uh, the ecosystem in Latin America, right? So we we think I, I think a lot of people in Latin America believe like there are little opportunities back in Latin America, and they need to go out to actually or they need to travel to actually, you know, be an impactful researcher or develop their career. So do you have any thoughts on how can we strengthen mm. like the Latin American ecosystem uh, in AI and computer vision without being a, without the need to travel out to actually develop the things we want to do? <clears throat> yeah. Uh... Th thank you for your kind words first, uh, and thank you for the question. There is, uh, I think a lot of us are victims of growing up in, in difficult countries and difficult environments. You know, we, we're, we're ripe with corruption and, and social issues and things like that. So one of the reasons why a lot of us travel abroad, it is because we're looking for better opportunities, but it's also because sometimes life in our own countries is hard. So... This, this, is, this might be a, a more difficult thing to solve, but one thing to keep in mind is because we have so many social issues, that means there are a lot of problems that are worth solving over there. So I've seen a lot of really nice initiatives. So in, in Colombia, we have the new uh, <clears throat> Sinfonia Center. So that's, that's a center for AI research. And a lot of the work that they do is engaged with the private sector and with uh, with the government to solve daily problems for people. So um, don't feel like, you know, you need to, you need to go abroad to solve these things. These things exist locally. And the second thing is we have, a lot of us also fall victim to the idea of, I need to solve these, these very big abstract problems. And we do that a lot when we write papers for conferences, right? We're looking at solutions of, of problems that we think are big but how impactful they are uh, on the long run, that's, that's, that's very hard to measure. So if you really care about 
your own community, your own society. It's it it is also important. It is also impactful to to solve these problems. The last thing is, and I think a lot of people are doing it, and we have to do it better, is to set up these communication and mentoring ecosystems where we, the people who have gone abroad and we're already living abroad, we have a more formal way to give back. So I know there's a lot of entrepreneurial ideas coming out from Latin America. Uh, they can benefit from the experience that, that we have built abroad. They have the stamina, the resilience to to build this thing. So if we can build a, a, a good way to give back in terms of mentorship and knowledge, uh, then hopefully people will get encouraged to stay and work, whether it's on research or on applications or on, on, on entrepreneurship. But be mindful. I know how difficult this, this thing is. You know, I don't claim to... To have the answers and the solutions, but uh, yeah, I hope that that I, those ideas sound interesting to people. Yeah, thank you, Ali. Thank you. Yeah, I think you thank mentioned you something very important, like giving back. I think that 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 should be our motto: give back to to people that is still in Latin America and give back a little bit with mentoring and help. Yeah, uh, Victor, I think we should uh, stop with the question. Because we have some announcements to make. Thank, thank you, Ali. They should really. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. So we, we have now a break, but I would like to have uh, an opportunity if you if you agree with that. Uh, uh, well, well, first we have the the tutorials in uh, fifteen minutes. So the idea is that we will create uh, we will be creating two rooms, two main rooms. Okay. And I will choose. I will let the participants choose the, the rooms. So one one will be the 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 presentation by Matias about, about how to write papers from the reviewer's perspective. And the other one is by Karina about the OCR application. So I will create the rules uh, independently, okay? But before that, uh, I, I have the, this crazy idea. If you, I think you receive, if not, if somebody can can uh, can help me uh, sharing the, the Gutter Town, Gutter Town uh, link. And if you have already created your, your avatar, I would like you to, to meet here in the lobby because I want to make a I want to make a picture of, of, of all the participants so far. I think some people will join later because we are 80, 80 participants, uh, 80 people registered. We are now 50 something. So it would be really nice to, to meet in Gator Town and do the break. Okay. If you if you can join us in Gator Town, make a picture. So, uh, can anybody share the link here, please? Uh, perfect. <clears throat> so, I will create the rooms for the moment. I will. Uh, Perfect. So I will go to Gutter Town just to see how is it going. Yeah, uh, please. Uh, maybe you can you can locate uh, around the, the logo. So we we have the logo. The logo is free. Uh, is not uh, is visible. We can wait for you. We we have some time. We have ten minutes. I don't know how to make it. If you can switch off your video, I mean, it might be better because uh, that way uh, we have more space for the, for the people there. If you can locate more, more in the left corner. I don't see that many people in the left corner.
Thank you. Uh, I, I see that Ruben Villegas joined us uh, here today. Uh, he was a keynote speaker for CPR. Uh, really nice talk. Welcome. Uh, Please mute. Please mute. Please mute. Please mute. Please mute. Yeah. Oh, I don't get to see all the people. Maybe you can you can you can move a little bit more to the to the left of corner. More to the top to have more space. More to the top, close to the ICCB logo, please. Ah, perfect. The, 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 yeah, we are getting there. <laughs> Chelsea and Christian, can you go to the top, please? We have some space there. Chelsea, Carmina, you can go to the top, and Fernando as well, if you can go to the top left corner. Yeah, perfect, yeah, it's going great. And, uh, maybe Alejandro, a little bit to the left to see your, your name. Uh, or, or Ali, Alejandro, or Alejandro Pardo, a little bit to the left. Yeah, perfect. Josimar, can you go a bit down? A little bit, just a little bit. Yeah, perfect, perfect, yeah. A little bit, a little bit to, to the top. <laughs> nice, 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 nice. I think, yeah. But I don't know how to... Perfect. I will make a capture, okay? Yeah, so perfect. I did a capture already. Yeah, so I will create um, I will create the, the rooms now, okay? Uh, you can take a you can take a, a I don't know if you can yeah. And you can join the, the I, I put the, the name of the of the tutorials in the rooms, okay? Mm. Rooms. Oh, I, will, I will create them, okay? And you can join uh, if you, uh, you you can join in any room you want, okay? See you there. Yeah, one thing, Gilberto, is that um, we are going to record both tutorials. So in case yes. people want to attend both of them, they can watch the tutorial they cannot attend in, in YouTube later. Ah, yeah, that's true. Thank you a lot. Yeah. So you will not miss anything. So you can choose any, anything you want. Thank you a lot. I think you should have received uh, an invitation to join. And you can join if you want. And we will see you at uh, this one and a half hour, but maybe it will be a bit, a bit, a little bit earlier. If if so, you can go to the you can go to Gather Town to do some socializing. Okay.
Elias, uh, I see. Have you received uh, Have you received the invitation to join the rooms, guys? Because I have three, I have uh, thirty five unassigned people. So please, if you are interested in one of the of the of the two um, tutorials, it's the time to to go. Otherwise, you can we can meet in the. We can meet. I, I will. I will post the the. I will put an image of the of the program here. But we are meeting again at eleven at eleven thirty for the, uh, for the round table. Mm -hmm. Loisa, are you here in Zoom? Uh, yes, I'm here. Yeah. Uh, Gilberto, can you try? I think they cannot choose a room. It's probably have to be uh, assigned uh, in each room. Okay, so maybe what you can do, can you change your name? Uh, sorry. Can, can you please uh, change your name, uh, uh, put a T1 or T2 at the beginning to see, uh, uh, to, to be able to assign you to a room? If you go to change name, uh, that way I can I can I can know which tutorial do you want to attend. But I see the tutorial one has already some people. So those of you that have not been have not been assigned to any any room, please change your name to T one or T two at the beginning, so I can I can assign you manually. But I see, I see that most all the, the people that remain is only like the, uh, Francisco, for example. You can you can you get into a room or not? Not yet, doctor. Okay. Yeah, because I think normally normally it should be uh, should be uh, possible to uh, to do that. Okay, so we'll assign Tony to room one. Okay. And for the rest of you should be uh, Karina. Karina should be in, in tutorial two. Mauricio, are you going to tutorial one? Yes, I think tutorial one. <laughs> okay, perfect. I see Ruben. Ruben, I, don't, I know you're interested in uh, attending uh, one of the tutorials. Karina, otherwise you can. Julio, you want to go to some tutorial? Sorry, Gilberto, I, I missed your question. Yeah, that if you're interested in attending in any of the tutorials, the one, the first one is how to write papers from the re reviewer's perspective. Yeah, yeah. I was okay. thinking this was, this was the, uh -huh. the, the the link for Matthias' presentation, is it? Isn't it? Uh, no, 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 I have oh. to switch it to the, to, to the tutorial to the breaking room. Okay, I'm going. Thank you, Gilberto. Well, I will say that. Mm -hmm. Carmina, are you there? Yeah. Yes, I am here. Do you want to, Do you want to attend uh, tutorial one or tutorial two? I think tutorial one. Okay. Perfect. Tutorial one. Uh, Chelsea. Okay. Ricardo Carlos. Um. Hello. I would like to attend. Uh... Uh, Matias uh, workshop. Okay, perfect. Daniel Tobon. Hello, I would like to go to the tutorial too. Okay, okay so I still have uh, Chelsea. I don't, uh, uh, Elias, I will send you to tutorial one. Hi, I'm Chelsea. Mm -hmm. I yep. want to go to tutorial two. Tutorial two, okay, perfect.
Uh, Jeff, you are part of the mentors. Uh, okay, so Sindhu. Okay, perfect. Albert, Alberto, are you interested in one of the tutorials? Uh, Daniel, are you still in the call or you moved? Because maybe maybe we should stop the the streaming now, no, for the moment. We we can. Ah, okay. Yeah. Of course. 